Hello beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk to you guys about lookism in Korea. So during my senior year in a class called Critical Theory, I gave a presentation on the colonial lens of westernization on Korean beauty standards. So to give a brief summary of how the presentation went, I used critical theories from Edward Said's Orientalism to argue that westernization and colonization in the history of South Korea has affected their beauty standards. Now, coming back to living in Korea, I have definitely observed the importance of beauty and appearance in Korean culture in action. And what a lot of my foreign friends, as well as my Korean American friends say to me is how important looks seem to be in Korean culture and how it makes them really hard to feel like they fit in or like they belong here. I think for a lot of foreigners it's something that's a little strange and maybe something that makes them feel uncomfortable but eventually I think they are able to work through the idea that they just don't look like Koreans and in a monocultural society looking different from everyone else is just inevitable. However, if you're a Korean American or a Korean who has lived abroad for a long time or a Korean who just doesn't feel very Korean culturally but you still ethnically look Korean, if you come to Korea you may feel that you don't really fit in with these beauty standards and you might find yourself wondering even though I'm Korean why do I feel like I don't belong here? And I would argue that it's because the cultural differences are so prevalent on the outside. Yes, Korean cultural ideals are extremely easy to note because it's all external and because everyone takes care of how they look here and if you're walking down the streets of Seoul you can kind of feel like you're the only extra in an ensemble movie set and not only do people take good care of their skin and have flawless makeup and hair but the fashion everyone cares about how they look how they dress and I think a lot of people first stepping into Korea can also feel like this is a very materialistic society this is a very superficial culture and it can really jar a lot of people at first and even turn them off from the idea of Korean society so in this video I want to go more in depth with the cultural history of Korea and the growth of its economy from being pretty much destitute in a post-war country and enduring colonialization and war and invasion after invasion and how as the economy steadily grew it became not only a very wealthy country but a country that really began to care a lot about its appearance and its image. So let's start off with a little bit of flash Korean history. In 1910, the Joseon Dynasty came to an end when Japan colonized Korea. And this was back when there was no South and North Korea and everything was united. And until 1945, all of Korea was under Japanese colonial rule. So needless to say, by the end of the Second World War era, Korea was not doing very well economically. Then, after the Japanese colonial period ended, five years later, in 1950, was the famous Yu-Gi-Oh! or June 25th, when North Korea decided to invade South Korea and the country split into two, beginning the Korean War. So Korea was never a powerful country to begin with in terms of economic strength or military force or even cultural influence. Our surrounding countries like China and Japan were always more ahead of us in that. But mind you, this is a country that's already been torn apart by war, by economic devastation and cultural annihilation. Well, annihilate, annihilate, annihilation. Cultural annihilation. <laughs> so mid-century South Korea was not a prospering country. And because of our lack of resources and manpower, all we could really do was work from the bottom up. Literally work the ground from scratch, build up businesses, and rebuild the economy. And this was around the era when my grandparents lived, and a few decades later when they had my parents. And I do think this really heightened their values of hard work and success. And when you hear a lot of immigrant Korean stories who moved to other countries, you can definitely notice the hard work ethic that you probably find in a lot of other Asian immigrant stories. But I think for Korea, it rings especially true because of all the economic hardship that they suffered throughout these years. And so by the late 1900s, Korea was really starting to grow economically. And I'm talking about South Korea now specifically. We were starting to grow some major companies and becoming a little more known in the world. Although I would say we did not really enter the global scale until maybe the 1990s or the early 2000s. Now, if you watched any Korean dramas like Reply 1988, you'll notice that a lot of Western influence actually began to enter the country around that time. My dad especially was really into a lot of Western music like ABBA and Billy Joel. And so culturally, South Korea was becoming a lot more westernized. So as South Korea began to develop and progress very quickly on a technological and economic scale, our cultural traditions and heritage were still trying to catch up to this progress. And the elements of Confucianism and traditional Asian culture had definitely not left our system by this time. So what does all this have to do with lookism and materialism in Korea's current social values? 
First off, to define lookism, now I looked up lookism on a dictionary and I felt like the definition they had was a little bit confusing, so I'm gonna try to put it in my words. Lookism is a cultural standard where appearance and beauty is highly valued and used as a judgment point. So what the heck does that mean? It means, basically, appearance matters a heck ton. People who are considered more attractive will be more likely to find a job. This phenomenon is also known as appearance discrimination. A drama that depicts this really well is My ID is Gangnam Beauty, where a freshman college student decides to get plastic surgery to transform her face because according to Korean beauty standards, it's considered ugly. And for being ugly, she was bullied all throughout high school. After she gets her plastic surgery, what do you know? Everyone starts to like her, she becomes super popular, and she's even given opportunities to show off some talents that she always had before, like dancing, that no one really knew about her because no one gave her a second look before she got her surgery. And as sad as that is, plastic surgery is a huge thing in Korea, and that's because of the conventional beauty standards that do exist. And I would say while I do think the pressure is definitely high, higher for women, this does not mean that men are exempt. Male beauty standards are pretty similar to women's. It includes pale skin, which is why people are so obsessed with sunscreen and covering themselves up and making sure they don't get tanned. Light features and eyes are also valued. That's why a lot of people dye their hair brown or wear contact lenses. Now that's not to say that the traditional Korean look of black hair and dark eyes, which is what pretty much every Korean is born with, is not highly valued. It's just I think that because of the Western idealization, that Korea is fixated on, it's very easy to get consumed by these beauty ideals that come from other influences. And I would say that's where a lot of the colonialization aspect comes in, where after being sort of battered down and losing their power to a lot of other countries, Korea really started to open up to Western influences. There is a sort of fixation and romanticizing of Western beauty ideals. And although our beauty standards are very specific and separate from these Western beauty ideals, I do still think that things like bigger and lighter eyes eyes, or white skin, being tall and thin, are highly prized values. And now with the addition of social media, and obviously the entertainment industry, the heavy influence of Korean actors, celebrities, and idols on the fashion scene and the makeup and beauty scene is so huge. And we even go as far as to create our own terms about beauty ideals, such as the V-line, which is when you want your face to be this sort of slim V shape that accentuates your cheekbones and your jawline, which I'll be honest, Koreans don't have very strong jawlines. And it really does make our faces look a little bit softer and rounder than the average Western high cheekbone, sharp jawline. But now, is it true that these Korean beauty ideals actually come from Western standards? Or is it just that we've highly prized these values for a long time in our culture? I can't say that I have a clear answer for that. I can't speak for every Korean, obviously. But I think even if it is on a subconscious and not a conscious level, I think I can safely say that the progress of plastic surgery and makeup styles and even our fashion has been heavily influenced by Western beauty. Let's start with something a little bit easier. Fashion. Fashion is pretty much an icon of colonization. For example, Look at these photos from the Joseon dynasty, which, as I mentioned earlier, ruled Korea until 1910. This is the hanbok, or the traditional Korean outfit, and we didn't have much Western fashion influence until the 1900s, after our colonization and after we became a little more culturally assimilated with Japan. And so after the war and after the 1950s, when South Korea separated from North Korea, there was definitely an increase in Western fashion. And Dongdaemun, which is one of the oldest markets in Korea, is really a place of birth for a lot of Korean fashion designers and brands. And to this day, most of Korea's fashion still does come from within the country, although we do import a lot of foreign brands like Zara, H&M. But that's not to say that the clothes made here look any more traditionally Korean than Western. And this is not something that's unique to Korea. If you go to almost any country around the world, you'll see the influence of Western fashion. And so fashion is really an easy way to see the effects of colonization and just how much of the global fashion scene is ruled by Western society. When we think of high fashion, you know, we think of Milan, Paris, New York. When we think about clothes, everyday clothes that we wear, uh, what do we wear? We wear t-shirts, we wear jeans, we wear button-up shirts, we wear miniskirts. 
clothes, traditions that originate from Western countries. Even modesty in women's fashion, which was a huge component of Korean style even just a few years ago, because of the influence of Western media and pop culture, the scandalous outfits that we see in magazines and movies and TV shows on Netflix, we see how Western fashion is beginning to dominate the Korean scene. And yes, Korean style is still very specific. There are a lot of aesthetics that I think are very unique to the Korean look, but in general, we know who really dictates the trends and the trend cycles in the fashion world. We know which runways and cities it comes from. And so if fashion is a general and more worldwide phenomenon of the effects of colonization and westernization on beauty standards, what roles do makeup, skincare, and plastic surgery play? Plastic surgery is one of the biggest ways in which we can see the differences between the emphasis on beauty ideals for Korean men and women. So while Korean men do take care of their skin and their weight and their fashion, there is a much higher percentage of Korean women who undergo plastic surgery. To hear of even a teenage girl getting plastic surgery for like her 16th birthday is really not shocking in Korea because there is such a huge emphasis on beauty and on appearance for women, especially about their faces and their weight when it comes to judging their success in society and in life in general. It really does feed into the market. Now this article that talks about the influence of Western culture on plastic surgery consumption in South Korea, the need to be liberated from suffering over appearance through surgery shows the dissatisfaction that women have with their physical appearances because of the cultural emphasis on beauty as a determinant of success. And it is so true that for many women, their standard of success really is judged by their appearance. And although now in 2021, Korea is actually becoming more of a feminist society that focuses more value on women and especially in women independence and living on their own and having a career. And there are many ambitious single women pursuing their careers. It almost seems like a 180 degree turn to cope with all the oppression that they felt throughout the years. And now really feeling like, oh, we need to as women stand up and pursue these careers and prove that we are as valuable in the workforce as men. But unfortunately, because of the deeply rooted ideals of beauty that's been embedded in Korean culture for so long and that really prize women's beauty, it's still very difficult for Korean women to break away from this mindset that, oh, I need to look a certain way and I need to fix my nose or fix my face to be popular, to be liked, to be successful and get good jobs. And so even though women are more encouraged to be independent, caring about your appearance and especially your weight is so normalized. Now, one of the most popular plastic surgeries that a lot of people don't actually think is even a big deal are the double eyelids. Now, I don't know if you can see on this camera, um, but I have monolids which are single eyelids and if you don't know what that is or if you never heard of them it just means that my eyelids don't have this fold on top of here that people with double eyelids generally uh, westerners do and even though there are koreans here who are born with natural double eyelids if they don't have double eyelids many of them do get surgery and there are actually like other ways to get this non-permanently in korea like there is glue there are stickers you can put on your eyes to create that fold and this trend is just huge because people really believe that having a double eyelid uh, it opens up your eyes and it makes them bigger and wider overall it makes you look more beautiful now this combined with the idea of pale skin really gives me an idea that these beauty standards kind of do come from Western ideals and Western faces. And the strive for whiteness in colonized cultures is not a unique thing to Korea itself. What's really shown me this are literature, books inspired by real lives, real people who found themselves idealizing Western features. Some great books that I would recommend that include this theme of Western idealization in other cultures is The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri, Nervous Conditions by Titi Rangaramba, and Persepolis by Marjane Satrapi. And so in conclusion, although I can't speak for every single person in Korea and how they feel about the beauty standards here, and maybe that would be something that's interesting to find out by asking people here what they think. But this was just my perspective from my own observations, my research, from a critical viewpoint that explores the effects of colonization on countries, particularly in the East. So I hope this gives you a little bit of insight about Korean culture, its values of beauty and materialism, and really why it focuses so much on these things. And I think in 
in summary, I can say that it's really because Korea is a country that sort of rose from the ashes from an age of extreme poverty and grew so rapidly to an age of extreme wealth that in this new economy, in this technologically driven society, we're still trying to figure out what it means to have our own identity. And in that process, trying to adopt traditions or values from other cultures can be almost inevitable. But I don't think that means we have to lose hope yet. I do think that slowly things could change for the better in Korean society. And of course, not everything about this culture is negative. But these are just some of the things that a lot of people pointed out to me and that I also noticed. So I wanted to explore it a little bit for you guys and really think about where these seemingly superficial and materialistic values come from. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like it, you can hit subscribe. And if there are any other cultural videos about Korea or the UAE or other places that you love to see. And I will see you guys on my next video. Bye guys.